this video, I am going to show you how I quickly color correct film scans in Adobe Photoshop. So these two images were shot on Mamiya 7 on Kodak Portra film and then scanned using the Hasselblad Imacon 646 film scanner. So I was scanning my negatives very flat in order to try to preserve all the fine detail in the highlights and in the shadows. So I would scan flat and then very carefully build up contrast later on in Photoshop. Now, the way that the scanning software worked is that you would get a, a preview of your image first and then you were supposed to use something very similar to Marquee Tool to make a selection of the area that you would like to scan, then you, the, the scanner would make the, the final scan for you. However, because the previews on the screen were quite small, I found that it was often quite difficult to make a precise selection of the frame. So I found that sometimes I would lose a little bit of the image. And to avoid this, I developed a technique where I actually, instead of selecting only the image, I would select bits of the film holder as well, like this. And then I would crop in Photoshop. And then later on, I realized that actually having a scan like this could help me to color correct as well. So let me show you what I mean. If you go to adjustments and then bring up the curves, we can use the eyedroppers on the side. So for example, if I use the first eyedropper, this one sets the, the black point. I'm going to change the sample size from the point sample to maybe five by five average. And then I am going to click on the film base, which is this thin black strip on the top like this. So I click on to the black point first. I set the black point first and then I take the white eyedropper and then I click on this area. Now, so this was scanned on an Imacon, but I think you could actually get a very similar looking scan using an Epson as well. Next, I would usually crop my image. So I think that the horizon could be slightly angled, so I could try to correct this as well. I can unlock the background layer like this, straighten the layer like this, and then crop. So I'm just going to do a very quick crop like this. Double click, and then I can take this further. For example, I could make another curves adjustment layer and then build up the contrast further like this. I could then create the color balance adjustment layer like this and then again tweak the color until I get something that I'm happy with. So this is the before and after. In case that you are unable to get the scan like this that has the white border around it and um, the film base, we could do this in a slightly different way. So for example, if I crop this first, and I'm just going to do a very rough crop, what I can do is if we go to adjustments and then create the curves adjustment layer again, we could use the pickers once again. So I'm going to select the white one first and then we can click on an area that we want to be white in an image like this and then if we go to the black picker and double click on it we can actually set 
we can go to the brightness and maybe set this to, let's say, 10% like this. Click OK. So do you want to save this as a default? I will say no. Then I can click on something very dark in an image like this. And this sets my black point. I could then take the middle picker to set the gray point. I could look for something that is black, white, or neutral gray. So in this example, maybe I will use this lamp post. I think it works quite well. So this is my basic adjustment. I will zoom out. I think it looks slightly off, but then we can work. We can take this as a starting point. So once again, I will go to curves like this. I will add another curves adjustment layer and then maybe increase the contrast like this. Then once again, I can go into color balance. Take away some of these yellows. And then maybe warm up the image like this. Okay, if we zoom in, I think that the skin color looks a little bit off. Then I can once again go into adjustments, maybe try the hue saturation, go into yellows, and then tweak the, the skin tone like this. I think I want it a little bit warmer. I think this looks better. But as you will see, this also can affect the, um, some other areas of the image that we don't want maybe to be affected. So for example, these shorts. So what we could do now is if we go to select and then color range, we can try to to limit our selection, to target the skin tones with our selection like this. I think this selection looks good. We can click OK. So this creates a mask. And then we can also fix this mask if we take a brush and then paint with black. And then maybe we can just mask off the shorts and maybe some other areas like this, this top, etc. Then another thing that I could do is if I stamp visible, so I press Command, Option, Shift and E to copy all of these layers into one layer on top, into one raster layer or pixel layer on top. This allows me to also use the Adobe Camera Raw filter. So I press Command Shift A. And now inside of this filter, I can use tools like, for example, Clarity, which allows me to adjust the, the local contrast. So maybe I can just use a tiny bit of this. And then I can also adjust um, I can use the white balance tool to adjust uh, the color balance like this. And then maybe I can also add a little bit of saturation to like this. So this is the before and after. I click OK. And then maybe finally, I could add a tiny bit more contrast like this. Okay, and then 
So this was my before and after. And this is how I built it up. So I made the first rough adjustment and then I slowly color corrected in steps. Okay, so once again, this is the before and after. And bear in mind that this was shot on film. So I think it's supposed to look uh, a little bit softer compared to, to something shot on a digital camera. Thank you. 